Hi everyone, it's Chris from IELTS Daily and today is Wednesday the 27th of April 2022. I'm supposed to have a live class with you later today and I want to express my sincere apologies. I'm not able to make that live class because of a prior commitment. So what I'm doing is pre-recording today's live class, just like we would normally have the class. We're going to talk about the same type of things, but unfortunately it's not going to be live. I'm going to publish it at the same time. So welcome if you're joining me today. It's great to have you here. We're going to look at two things today. The first one is we're going to do a bit of practice of reading uh, and then we'll move on to the general training writing exercise, which is a letter because we haven't done that for a long time. I hope you're doing well. I'm pretty good. I just, um, I've been really busy recently and I don't know if you know, I think I told you that next week and for the next four weeks, um, almost all of May, apart from the last Wednesday, there's no, there's no live classes during May apart from I think the last Wednesday. I have a, a four week holiday and I'm very excited about it. So I'm really sorry that we won't be having live classes, but we will publish some other videos on the IELTS Daily YouTube channel. Make sure you come and check those out. It's great to have um, lots of people watching them and commenting. We love to read your comments. Shall we have a look at what I want to do today, which is um, the following. We've got um, on the screen, you'll see in red, we're going to be, um, we're going to do the general training. We're going to do reading and then we're going to do some general training in the writing. Don't forget that if you want to look at mock, uh, model answers, you can come to the IELTS Daily website. It's a great resource for you to, to use and practice. Now, <clears throat> if you haven't already watched our fantastic reading strategy videos, have a look at those videos there on the IELTS Daily website. It will teach you the strategy that I think is the most effective uh, particularly for, 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 for most of you, if you want to achieve a band seven or higher. It's the strategy that I use all the time. It's no skimming, no scanning, no reading for detail. The strategy is really simple. It's the same for every type of question. So there's no need to practice different types of questions. Good. Let's begin. On the screen, you should um, see that there is uh, the question type, which is we're going to do short answer questions and also some gap fill summary completion style. The question, the text is here. And as I mentioned in previous classes, if you are doing this on the computer based test, you may have the question, well, you will have the questions on the right and the question uh, and the text on the left. But for the sake of today's class, I will probably move to the bigger text so that you can see it. And then we will look at the questions. Remember that for short answer questions and for gap fill summary completion questions, 99% of the time the questions are in order. So the question one, the answer will not be found after question two in the text. It's normally like that for, for those type of questions. Just remember that it's a, it's a useful tip for you to know. What we do in the, for the strategy, all we do is we read a short section and then we have a look at the questions. So we'll read this section here in grey. Endangered chocolate. The cacao tree, once native to the equatorial American forest, has some exotic traits for a plant. Slender and shrubby, the cacao has adapted to life close to the leaf littered forest floor. Its large leaves droop down away from the sun. Cacao doesn't flower as most do at the tips, uh, as most do as most plants do at the tips of it of its outer and uppermost branches. We stop here and the strategy would be to go and look at the questions. Okay, just read a small section and have a look at the questions. So I'm going to go to the questions here. And unlike the majority of plants, what does the cacao plant not do? I think we read that actually, I think it said something in the text and I'm going to go back and have a look and just and just check. So it does say um, cacao doesn't flower. And you notice here how they've used the word doesn't. And in the question, it says, do not not do majority of plants. And in the text, it says, as most plants do. And the word majority is very similar to most plants do. Therefore, the answer they do not, they do not flower. And 
Notice here that the word flower actually is a verb. It does not flower. That's a verb. Flower can also be a noun, but in this particular context, it's being used as a verb. So therefore, we know we're sure that the answer is the following. The answer would be um, flower. And I'll put it in large letters. Don't forget, uh, people, um, the question says write no more than two words. Please do not repeat words or ideas from the text. So if you write not flower, um, this would be an incorrect answer because what does the cacao plant not do? It does not not flower. That would be a double negative. So please make sure that you pay attention to the um, grammar of the of the answer. So the, the particular answer for this one would be flower. Now we don't stop there in our reading exercise. Um, it says what do cacao flowers grow into? I don't think we read anything on the left which talked about growing into something. Now we don't stop there, we have to go to the next part of the text which is gap fill summary completion. It says write no more than two words and it says ways of dealing with a cacao plant's problems and the text didn't talk about problems with cacao plants so I don't think we're going to find this answer here but it is useful to see what type of question is coming up. Right, so there are, there are our answers. All we do now is go back to the top. We know the answer for question one, so we move to question two and we read the second half of this paragraph. It says, instead, its sweet white buds hang from the trunk and along a few fat branches which form where leaves drop off. These tiny flowers transform into pulp-filled pods almost the size of rugby balls. The low hanging pods contain the bitter tasting magical seeds. So um, it does say here, it says um, these tiny flowers transform into, transform into, this question it says grow into. This might be a little easy for IELTS because notice here how you've got the word into here and into here. Um, the answer is pulp filled pods. Now in the in the official answer you may find that the answer is pulp filled and pods because pulp filled is actually one word. Because it's hyphenated that's one word. So if you wrote the answer pods that would be a correct answer because notice here how the pulp filled is in um, it's in brackets which means it's an optional word. If I say that um, cacao flowers grow into pods that's okay that's an, a, a completely acceptable answer. If I write pulp filled pods that's also a correct answer. What you um, would not get an answer for would be into pulp filled pods because you have the word into in the question. This is now three words so that would be an incorrect answer. I hope that makes sense. So the answer there would be pulp filled pods. We don't stop there, we go to the next one. It says along with spices and cocoa beans. There was nothing there about spices and cocoa beans. Ways of dealing with cacao plants problems. There's nothing there which mentioned problems. Good, so we go back to the questions and read the next part of the paragraph. It says, somehow more than 2,000 years ago, ancient humans in Mesoamerica discovered the secret of these beans. If you scoop them from one from the pod with their pulp, let them ferment and dry in the sun, then roast them over a gentle fire, something extraordinary happens. They become chocolatey. Okay, and... Um, Notice here it says, along with spices and cocoa beans, what is required to create chocolate? Okay, um, let's see if there's anything in this particular paragraph. Um, I don't necessarily see anything about spices. Um, no. 
what is required to create chocolate? Um, yeah, nothing, nothing in here which talks about that. So what we're going to do is go to the next part which talks about dealing with a cacao plant's problems. There's nothing there which talks about problems. I hope you agree with that. It's quite obvious. Let's go to the next part. And if you then grind and press the beans, which are half cocoa butter or more, you will obtain a rich crumbly chestnut brown paste, chocolate at its most pure and simple. We go back to the questions and we say, along with spices and cocoa beans, I don't see anything there talking about spices and cocoa beans. Next with nothing about problems at all. So we go to the next uh, part. The Maya and Aztecs revered this chocolate, which they frothed up with water and spices to make bracing concoctions. It was an edible treasure offered up to their gods, used as money and hoarded like gold. Long after Spanish explorers introduced the beverage to Europe in the 16th century, chocolate retained an aura of aristocratic luxury. Great, so it does talk about spices here. It says, along with spices and cocoa beans, what is required to create chocolate? I think it says it there quite easily. It says um, the, cho the cocoa beans is written above and it says here um, you need to have spices and water. So the answer for this one would be water. We don't stop there. We go to the next answer. It says, it says cacao grows close to which part of the world? I don't think there's anything there which talked about a particular part of the world. OK, um, yeah, nothing there which talks about a part of the world. We don't stop. We go to the next part and it talks about um, ways of dealing the cacao plants problems. Nothing there about problems. In 1753, the Swedish botanist Carolus Linnaeus gave the cacao tree genus the name Theom Theobroma, which means food of the gods. In the last 200 years, the bean has been thoroughly democratized, transformed from an elite drink into ubiquitous candy bars, cocoa, butter, cocoa powders and confections. Today, chocolate is becoming more popular worldwide with new markets open, opening up in Eastern Europe and Asia. So it does say cacao grows close to which part of the world. And this is a common trick here because they've mentioned Europe and East Asia. Low level speakers are going to be thinking, ah, oh, it's part of the world. But Europe and East Asia is actually four words. So we know that's not going to be the right answer. And the question says close to which part. So use that as a little tip. I don't think we've found the answer yet. Um, it doesn't talk about uh, anything here. Uh, no, I, I, I don't see it yet. It doesn't say close to. So I'm... I'm thinking that that's not the right answer yet, but it may be we'll come back. Um, we don't stop there. We go to the next part, which is about dealing with a plant's problems. Nope, nothing about the plant's problems. Let's continue. This is both good and good news and bad because although farmers are producing record numbers of the cacao bean, this is not enough. Some researchers worry to keep pace with global demand. Cacao is facing some alarming problems. Philippe, blah, 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 head of the cacao program at the Centre for International Cooperation in Development Oriented Agricultural Research, WOW, in France, recently addressed a seminar in the Dominican Republic. So in a, again, another place in the world. It doesn't talk about um, growing. That is where the seminar was held. So if we go back to the question, you'll see that it says it grows close to which part of the world. It's, there's nothing mentioned here yet. It did mention a problem. It says need to find plants which are not affected by. It doesn't talk about anything, kind of any effects here. So I don't think the answer is correct. Here we go. He displayed a map of the world of reading a narrow band within 18 degrees north and south of the equator where cacao grows. In the fourth century since the Span Spanish first happened upon cacao, it has been planted all around this hot, humid tropical belt from South America and the Caribbean to West Africa, East Asia and New Guinea, Vanuatu in the Pacific. OK, so it does say um, narrow band within 18 degrees north and south of the 
equator. So we know there that there's, there's an answer possibly there. There's too many answers here for you to choose one. And the question does say close to. And the answer close to which part? And the answer would be the equator. And this would probably be an optional word. Um, the equator is grammatically correct, so you would probably be better choosing the equator. That's the answer there. Um, I didn't see anything which talked about a dealing with a problem or being affected by something, but we might ask, what is the special technique used by many cacao producers? It didn't talk about anything with techniques. Let's continue. Today, 70% of all chocolate beans come from West Africa and Central Africa. In many parts, growers practice so-called pioneer farming. They strip patches of forest of all but the tallest canopy trees and then they put in cacao. Using temporary plantings of bananas to shade the cacao while it's young. With luck, groves like this may produce annual yields of 50 to 60 pods per tree for 25 to 30 years. But eventually, pests, pathogens and soil exhaustion, exhaustion take their toll and yields diminish. So it did talk about a technique um, in the question. If we look here, which what is the special technique? I think um, uh, this whole paragraph is about the technique. And so the answer there is very clearly pioneer farming. That is the special technique. Because it's written in capital letters as well, that would give you a clue that it's special. Pioneer farming. Make sure that you spell your words correctly too. It's really important that you spell correctly. Um, farmers often use which product to pro provide protection against the sun? I did t notice something here. It says they strip patches of forest of all but the tallest canopy trees and then they put in cacao using temporary plantings of bananas to shade the cacao while it's young. Um, shade, shade is to cover from the sun. So I think that's going to be the answer there. And it, they use bananas. So the answer for this, they use the product is bananas. So therefore, the answer is quite obvious there. So we've finished all of these, but I still haven't found the problems. OK. Let's see. Then the growers move on and clear the new forest patch. Unless farmers of other crops get there first, you cannot keep cutting the tropical forest because the forest itself is endangered, said blank. World demand for chocolate increases by 3% a year on average. With a lack of land for new plantings in tropical forests, how do you meet that? I can't really find anything about fine plants which are not affected by. The affected by here is, is the problem. Many farmers have a more imminent worry. Worry is like a problem. Outrunning disease. Cacao, especially when grown in plantations, is at the mercy of many afflictions, mostly rotting diseases caused by various species of fungi, which cover the pods in fungus or kill the tree. These fungi and other diseases spoil more than a quarter of the year world's yearly harvest and can devastate entire cacao growing regions. So the answer here, the most logical answer here for me is disease. Now, it's protecting them from disease. Now, some of you might ask, is it fungi? Um, fungi, fungus, we've got um, fungus and disease. The reason why I think disease is a better answer here, they may in the test give you the option to use um, by fungi or fungus. There may be three answers that are possible. I prefer disease here because it says these fungi and other diseases spoil more than a quarter. So fungi is not the only problem. There are actually other diseases as well. So I feel like diseases is a more suitable answer because it accompany, it, um, uh, it encompasses everything. So I'm going to put disease as my answer there. It says chocolate producers need to work directly with farmers instead of something. So working with people, I didn't say in, I didn't see in here. It talks about working with people. One such disease, which is broom, devastated the cacao plantations in the Bahia region of Brazil. Brazil was the third largest producer of cacao beans, but in the 1980s, the yields fell by 75%. According to this person, if a truly devastating disease like witch's broom reached West Africa, the world's largest producer, it could be catastrophic. In another producer, if another producer had ripples. If another producer had the misfortune to falter now, the ripples would be felt all over the world. 
In the United States, for example, imported cacao is the linchpin of an $8.6 billion domestic chocolate industry that in turn supports the nation's dairy and nut industries. 20% of all dairy products in the UK go into confectionery. It didn't talk here about working with people. I don't see anything there. Today, research has been carried out to try to address the problem by establishing disease-resistant plants. However, even the best plants are useless if there isn't anywhere to grow them. Typically, farmers who grow cacao get a pittance for their beans compared with the profits reaped by the rest of the chocolate business. Most are at the mercy of local business middlemen who buy the beans and sell them for much higher price than the chocolate manufacturers. So it talks about producers here. It talks about people producing chocolate and it says... Chocolate producers need to work directly with farmers, so they should work with um, typically farmers who grow, yeah? And here the answer would be middlemen, because it says that farmers should not work with middlemen, or pe producers should not work with middlemen. So the answer would be middlemen here. Um, need to encourage farmers to use something farming methods to grow cacao plants. I don't think we found anything in this paragraph here. If the situation is to improve for farmers, these people need to be removed from the process. But the economics of cacao is rapidly changing because of the diminishing supply of beans. Some companies have realised that they need to work more closely with farmers to ensure that sustainable farming practices are used. They need to replant areas and plant a buffer and create a buffer for the forest to have ground cover, shrubs and small trees as well as, a canop as, well as the canopy trees. Then the soil will be more robust and pr more productive. They also need to empower the farmers by guaranteeing them a higher price for their beans so that they will be encouraged to grow cacao and can maintain their way of life. It does say here something farming. Farming practices. Can you see here that's a really common um, thing in the test? Farming methods, farming practices. They've used two words together. So what's the word before it? They are sustainable. Um, and that might be sustainable here. That's the answer. Make sure that you spell it correctly. In the test, make sure that you notice that it might be says, it might say that farming practice, to ensure that farming practices which are sustainable are used. So notice here they might use the word sustainable afterwards. So that so they could mix up the questions a little bit. I have finished that reading. I hope you found that useful. We steamed through that really quickly because in the test you do need to keep going as as quickly as possible. Hope that was useful. We're going to go on to the general training writing task now. If you are a, an academic task um, candidate, don't worry, you can still watch this and have some tips for general English. General training letter. You had a problem while staying at a hotel and the receptionist was very helpful. Write a letter to the manager of the hotel. In your letter, describe the problem that you had. Explain how the receptionist helped you. Suggest ways to prevent the problem from happening again. So there are three things that you want to do in your letter. It says, begin your letter, dear sir or madam. So make sure that you Firstly, you've, you've got to answer all the questions. I usually set the scene as a small paragraph, then I answer each question in a separate, independent, clear paragraph, and then I close my letter. Don't forget it says, start your letter with dear sir or madam, just write it exactly how you see it. Don't write dear sir or dear madam, write dear sir or madam, because that's what the task is asking you to do. Good. So my letter would start like this dear sir oops or madam exactly how you see it i might go to the split screen here good and i'll make it switch that okay it says, stayed at a hotel and the receptionist was very helpful. What do you think my problem could be? Um, there was a leak in my room. There was a there was a dripping shower head and I couldn't sleep. Do you know how um, if you have a shower and there is a drip, 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 we call that a dripping shower head. The head of the shower is dripping. So I might say that there was a dripping shower head and I couldn't sleep. So I went to the receptionist and I asked her or him to to tell me that, uh, to fix the problem and what I might suggest is that 
every week all the rooms are checked to make sure that there are no plumbing problems. If you, do, if you know what a plumber is, a plumber is a person who fixes the water pipes. So let's um, write that letter now to see if we can do something similar. Okay. Um, I stayed at your I stayed at your hotel on the eleventh of February, twenty twenty two, in room two two o one. So I've said, I stayed at your hotel on the 11th of February 2022 in room 201. Unfortunately, I had an issue which meant that I had to move rooms. But thanks to your helpful receptionist, Peter, this was sorted quickly. So this is an example of a grammatically complex sentence. I've used the word which, and then I've used um, a compound sentence. And I've said, but thanks to your helpful receptionist, Peter, and that's also a complex sentence. So I'm setting the scene. I'm explaining what the, what the issue or what the letter is about. Describe the problem that you had, yeah? Um, I was woken in the middle of the night by a dripping shower head which would not stop despite trying to turn the taps as tightly as possible. So this is an example, we've got a despite sentence, grammatically complex. We've got dripping shower head which is an example of lexical resource. It's a less common collocation which we've got the word which which is also grammatically complex um, happy. After not being able to get back to sleep, so an after sentence is grammatically complex. Yeah, make sure that you think about different subordination uh, types of sentences. After not being able to get back to sleep, I approached Peter, who was working on the reception, on reception, and he quickly arranged for me to move to a new room. So there we've got um, a who sentence, which is a grammatically grammatically complex sentence, and finally. I would like to suggest that all rooms are checked on a weekly basis by your hotel maintenance team so that other guests do not have to suffer the same problems. So that would give you, um, that's one sentence, and it's telling the, um, the, reader, the, the reader, suggest ways to prevent the problem from happening again. Please notice there that it does say ways, and this is a really, really, really important point. If you only give one way, you will not score the required desired score, uh, you will not get above a band six, six in task achievement. 
So please make sure that you give ways. Okay, you may also wish to have a telephone number in each room to report faults such as this so guests do not have to visit reception. So there's another solution that you've offered. Overall, I would I sorry, overall I really enjoyed my stay at your hotel and I would like to thank Peter for his helpful attitude. I think this is a, a nice conclusion statement and I can say yours sincerely. In fact, when we don't know the person, it's probably better to say yours faithfully because we're starting with dear sir or madam. Um, dear sir or madam, you can say yours faithfully or yours sincerely. Um, it doesn't really matter, but we don't know the person here. And you can say, um, Jim, yours faithfully, Jim. And there is your letter. Let me just check that we have gone over the 150 words. That is the kind of the ideal 177 words that we've written there. So 177 words. Great. I think that is enough and we did that really quickly. So um, I hope you found today's lesson useful. I'm really sorry that I didn't manage to get to see you live. Um, in any case, you've done some reading practice today and we've done some general training letter writing. For general training, it's really important that you answer all of those three questions very explicitly and spot, if you can, any tricks where the examiner is looking for give ways as a plural. So make sure that you do give more than one way. I'm Chris from IELTS Daily and I won't see you for another four weeks. I wish you all a great um, kind of May. I'll see you probably at the end of May, but thanks for joining and keep looking at the IELTS Daily web, uh, YouTube page because we're going to be releasing more videos while I'm away. Take care. Bye for now.